All right, guys, so we're going to start out today with 2.1, day 3 of 2.1, I should say, solving problems in the equation of inequalities. So with this, today we're going to worry about kind of a geometric style setup on this. We're going to start talking about applications of volume geometry. So, solving an application of volume parameter. So if you were to look at this, we have the length of a rectangular coral, corral, sorry, is 2 foot more than three times the width. So we have that equation there already. Right here. Equation, okay. Um, the corral is situated such that one of its shorter sides is adjacent to a barn and does not require fencing. So over here, right here in this area, it doesn't require fencing, okay. And the total amount of fencing is 774 feet. Uh, then find the dimensions of the crowd. Okay. So we have the equations here with all this. However, the setup is we need to figure out what x actually is so we can determine the sides of this fence. So to do that, Let's go ahead and think about what we're going to do here, right? So the parameter, so the parameter in this setup is going to be two times the length, right? If you have two times the length, so we'll say two times L plus, normally it would be two times the width, right? But in this case, we don't have to put any fence here. We have plenty of fence there. We just need to put fence on this other side. So we're going to do one times the width. So for our parameter, then they said overall the total amount of fencing was 774. So we know that our p-value is equal to 774 feet. So 774 feet. We also know that our length is 3x plus 2, and we know our width is simply x. So we have the equation to plug in for these variables. Let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so our parameter is 774 feet, and that should equal 2 times the length, which is 3x plus 2, and then plus 1 times our width, so just plus x then. Now we see the solve for x. So now, you also need to use your PEMDAS. Don't forget that, okay? So with the PEMDAS, Parentheses. Can we do any size of this parentheses? 2x, I mean 3x plus 2? No, we can't really do anything with that. There's no exponents. So now we just do multiplication. So we know there's no parentheses, no exponents, multiplication. Well, there's nothing we do with 774, so we're going to leave that the way it is. On the left hand side, an equal sign. But now we can take this 2 and distribute it into the parentheses. So we have 2 times 3x, which gives you 6x, and we got 2 times 2, which gives you plus 4. And then we're still left with an x out here. Don't forget about that x. That x is still there, so plus x. So we took care of the multiplication, and there's no division. So now we do addition and subtraction. Well, let's combine like terms on the right hand side. So on the left, we still got 774. And then over here on the right, we have 6x plus 4 plus x. So what is 6x plus x? Well, we should get 7x. And then we still just have a 4. Now, we just need to take care of this 4 and get rid of it off the right-hand side and get it on the left-hand side. So let's subtract four from both sides. Fours go away on the right, and so we're only left with seven x on the right. 
And then 774 is subtract 4 is just going to give us 770. Okay? Now, we can solve for x. We need to divide by 7 on both sides. Since it's 7 times x, we need to divide by 7 to get rid of it. So divide by 7 on both sides. 7's go away. And we're left with x. Draw a better x. That was kind of messed up. So we got x equals, we have 7 going into 770. You don't know, technically need a calculator. If you did a calculator, it's fine. But you technically don't need one of this, right? Because 7 goes into 7 one time. So 7, let's subtract that. Those go away, 0. And you bring down the next one, 7. 7 goes into 7 one time. So 1 times 7 is 7. Subtract so those two, and they go away. And you're left with a 0. And 7 times 0 will give you a 0, right? So, with that, we should get the answer of x is equal to 1 10. Now, is that the answer? No. He wants to know the dimensions of the corral. So, he wants to know what the length is and what the width is. But we know the width is 110, so that's part of the answer. So, we can simply come over here and say our width is 110 feet. And now we should find our length. So with that, the length is going to be 3 times our x value of 110 plus 2. So we should get, I'll write over here, 110 times 3 so 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 1 is 3, so we should get 330 plus 2. So we should get 332. So 332 feet is your length. So for our length, we got 332. And for our width, we got 110. Those are the answers now. All right, so now we're going to work on dealing with a little bit of angles. So, application involving angles. Two angles are complementary. So, one angle measures 10% less than four times the other angle. So they give us that equation right here. 4 times the angle, but less than, 10 less than, okay? So 4 times an angle, but less than, 10 less than. So find the measure of the angle. Well, hopefully everybody understands that this is a right angle. That's what this sign right here means. This sign right there means right angle, okay? So that means... Right angle. The right angle is always going to be 90 degrees, right? So at least we have what these two angles should add up to, right? If we were to add 4x minus 10 plus x, we should get 90. So then that's exactly what we're going to do to find out what x is, to find out what these angles are. So we know we've got 90 should equal 4x minus 10, that angle, plus x. So again, doing our n dots. All right. Is there anything we need in parentheses? No. It's 4x minus 10. We can't combine anything else in there. However, though, if we're going to move those parentheses, 
we can combine these x's, right? So you have 90 on the left, nothing happens over there. But over here we can combine 4x plus x. So 4 plus, there's an imaginary 1 in front of that, so 4 plus 1 gives you 5x minus 10. And now let's go ahead and get rid of this minus 10 over here. So to get rid of minus 10, you want to add 10 to both sides. So we have the 10s go away on the right. And you have 90 plus 10, which gives you 100. And that equals 5x. All right, so now, how do we get rid of that 5 on the x? We need to divide. So divide by 5. So we're going to look at x. Should equal, I'll write it there anyway. So we're going to do this. So five, oh, goodness. I'm racing everything. <laughs> so we got 5x, five 5x5. Five five. Those fives go away over here, so we're left with x. And 100 divided by 5 is 20. Okay, so it's 5 20 dollar bills, it gives you 100 bucks. So our x equals 20. Well, then what are the angles? Well, this first angle, we're simply going to say 4 times 20. And then minus 10. So if we do this, then in parentheses, not exponents, we more addition. 4 times 20 is 80 minus 10, which should give us 70. So the first one is 70 degrees. And if you think about this, that makes sense, right? Because you do even have to put that in an equation to figure that out if you knew x was 20. No. Because you should understand that these two angles add up to equal 90. So if they add up to equal 90, then you could also could have said, well, if I want to find out what the other angle is, I guess I'm going to take 90 minus 20, because you know this angle is 20 degrees. So if you take 90 minus 20, that should give you 70 degrees as well. So therefore we know that this one is 70 degrees if you already knew x. But you didn't even have to plug in the 20 back into the equation. Just a simple subtraction, taking 90 minus 20, and you'd have been just fine. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And you're able to grasp what we did there on that one. So again, we had one angle of 70 degrees, and that angle had a little degree sign on it, 20 degrees. Okay. On well, this next one here, now we've got solving a literal equation. So the formula of the volume of a rectangle is the box's volume, your V, equals length times width times height. Okay? And they've already given us the volume over here, looks like. And they've given us the length. They've given us the height, but they don't have the width. So it wants us to solve the formula of V equals LWH for W. Well, let's just go ahead and make W, we'll make that an X. So if we know all those values that we're looking at, well, this is A, and if we're looking at volume, we go length times width times height, and we know that our volume is 200 inches cubed, we know our length is 20, and we know our height is 5, but we don't know width. Alright? 
So that's what we're going to try and figure out. We just got a soft X, which hopefully most of y'all are seeing right here, that you and I just need to do a little, shall we say, division. So, well, multiplication and some division. So you can take 200 equal, and then 20 times 5 is 100, because 100 hundred dollars so you compose the twenty I mean the five twenty dollar bills. So you have five times twenty gives you one hundred, so one hundred X. And then let's go ahead and divide by one hundred. Alright. So this is gonna take all these zeros away and this one hundred is gonna go over here on the right. So we are left with x equals and 100 divided, I mean 200 divided by 100. In other words, 100 can go into 200 twice. So 2 inches. So x, our width is 2 inches. So you can simply say width is 2 inches. For b. It says, find the value of W if the volume is 200, length is 20, and H is 5. Oh, we just did part B. Okay. All right. I see what they wanted to do. I see what they wanted to do. Okay. So let's erase this real quick. And I'll do the second problem first. So what they're looking at, honestly, with part A, I'm sorry, I did this backwards. They just wanted us to solve the actual uh, equation with the variables, okay? In other words, they've got V equals your LWH. And to solve for W, you're simply going to divide by the two other values of your LH. So LH on both sides. So the L's go away and the H's go away on the right. And you're left with volume divided by length times height equals your width. And you could have simply just been plugged in these values to find this answer as well. So it gave us the same answer. If we would have done this by saying our width is equal to our volume of 200 divided by our length of 20 times our height of 5, we get the same thing. We have 200 divided by 100, which is still equal to 2 for our 2 inches. So either way, you can work it out the software. OK, and the last example here we're going to work on today is dealing with the solving of an early equation. Okay? So the formula to find the area of a trapezoid is given by area equals one half times the base one plus base two, all that times your height. For B1 and B2 are the lengths of the parallel sides, and H is the height. Solve this formula for B1. Well, all they're wanting us to do is just solve for B1 using this equation. So. If we have this equation, so area equals one half B1, oh no, BI. So use the statistics B1 plus B2, and then times your height. And that wants us to solve for. B1, I want to solve that value right there. So let's let's do this. Let's go ahead and first thing easy to get rid of would be this H. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by H. So the H's go away over here on this side. On the left, we're left with A over h equals one half times b one 
plus b2. Now, don't let that one half confuse you. Again, if you do this, it's just like multiplication of two fractions, right? Because b1 plus b2 is the same thing as saying all over 1. So you just multiply across. If you were to do that, you would get, on the left, you set up a over h. And then you have 1 times b1 plus b2. So you do that with 1 times b1 plus b2, which simply gives you, on top, b1 plus b2. On the bottom, you have 2 times 1, which is 2. So it makes more sense to write it that way, and it's perfectly fine. So now we see here this 2. Well, let's go ahead and multiply by 2 on both sides. So where this 2 goes away on the right, and we're left with, on the left-hand side, you have 2a all over h. That equals b1 plus b2. Now we're solving for b1 there. So what do we got to do to get rid of b2? We just need to subtract it from both sides. b2 from both sides. Boom. On the right side, they go away. On the left-hand side, you have 2a all over h minus b2 equals b1. Okay. So that is the answer to this problem right here. Put a red box around it. It's the easiest way, the simplest way to write that answer right there. And that's all you're having to do is simplifying using your PEMDAS uh, acronym to where you understand to use. Parentheses, exponents, uh, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Follow that order every time. Again, volume, root pen, boss. And if you follow that and go in that order every time, you should get the answer, no problem. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.